next important topic is calculating the surface integral. If R is the shadow region of a surface like S defined by the equation above x, y, z equal to c, and g is continuous function defined at points of S, then you can calculate the integral of g over this surface. This integral is the double integral of g times the magnitude of the gradient of f divided by the magnitude of the dot product between gradient of f and p dA. Now remember that p is the unit normal vector. The integral itself is called the surface integral. You're calculating the integral of g over surface s. In terms, it can be written as the double integral of f of x, y, and z ds, which in terms, if you use parametrization, you get the double integral of f r of u and v times the magnitude of the cross product between r u and r v d a. In this example, we're interested in calculating the surface integral of x squared ds, where s is the unit sphere x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals to 1. Let us use a parametrization. Since you have a unit sphere, you get x equals to sine phi cosine theta, y is sine phi sine theta, and z is equal to cosine phi. Phi bounded between 0 and pi, theta is bounded between 0 and 2 pi, and this is the formula that we try to follow. The double integral of f ds which is also can be calculated using the double integral of f of r u and v times the magnitude of the cross product between r u and r v dA. Let's go back to parametrization. r of u and v is x of u and v in the direction of x axis plus y of u and v in the direction of y axis plus z of u and v in the direction of z axis. So if you take u to be phi and v to be theta, this is the parametrization that we have for a sphere of radius a. So you have a sine phi cosine theta, a sine phi sine theta, and a cosine phi. But in this case, a is equal to one. We wanna show that the magnitude of r phi plus product with r theta is nothing but sine phi. First of all, r phi cross r theta is equal to the determinant of, on the first row, we're going to list i, j, k. On the second row, we have the partial derivative of x with respect to phi, the partial derivative of x with respect to phi can be calculated as just taking the partial derivative with respect to phi, you get a cosine phi cosine theta. Then you take the partial derivative of y with respect to phi, which is basically taking the partial derivative of a sine phi sine theta with respect to phi, which becomes a cosine phi sine theta. And finally, you take the partial derivative of z with respect to phi, which is partial derivative of a cosine phi with respect to phi, which is negative a sine phi. And finally, on the last row, you have the partial derivative of x with respect to theta, which is negative a sine phi sine theta. Then you have the partial derivative of y with respect to theta. You get a sine phi cosine theta. And finally, you take the partial derivative of z with respect to theta, which is just zero because z doesn't have any theta in it. 
Well, in calculating the determinant of three by three matrix, you get a squared sine squared phi cosine theta in the direction of x axis plus a squared sine squared phi sine theta in the direction of y axis plus a squared sine phi cosine phi in the direction of z axis. So I just want to show you if you find the magnitude of the cross product, it's nothing but sine phi. So since r phi cross r theta is equal to the quantity that we just calculated, the magnitude of the cross product is the square root of a squared sine to the fourth of phi cosine squared theta plus a to the fourth sine to the fourth of phi sine squared of theta plus a to the fourth sine squared phi times cosine squared of phi. Well, please note that they all have common factor a to the fourth, so you can separate the square root. You get the square root of a to the fourth, and you're going to list the rest of it, which is the square root of sine to the fourth of phi cosine squared of theta plus sine to the fourth of phi sine squared of theta plus sine squared of phi cosine squared of phi. But please note that between these two terms, sine to the fourth of phi is common. So if you factor this out, you get cosine squared plus sine squared, which is equal to one. So you get a squared times the square root of sine to the fourth of phi plus, you're gonna repeat the term that you have here, sine squared of phi times cosine squared of phi. In terms, you have a squared times square root of, this is power four, so you can write that sine squared of phi, sine squared of phi plus sine squared of phi times cosine squared of phi. So basically now you can factor out sine squared of phi, and this guy becomes a squared times square root of sine squared of phi, because if you factor out sine squared of phi, sine squared of phi plus cosine squared of phi is equal to one. So this is equal to a squared sine phi. And since a is equal to one, this becomes sine of phi, as you can see here. Okay, let us go back to our formula. The double integral of x squared dx, ds is equal to the double integral of, so wherever you see x, you're going to use sine phi cosine theta. So you get sine phi cosine theta to the second power. And now for your The magnitude of RU cross RV, you have the magnitude of R phi cross R theta, which is equal to sine phi and then dA. So it is equal to the double integral of zero to pi of sine squared phi cosine squared of theta times sine phi, and you have d phi d theta, and then you take the outer integral with respect to theta. The rest of the calculation is just u sub. This is equal to 0 to 2 pi of cosine squared of theta d theta times the integral 0 to pi of sine to the third phi of d phi. Now we are just going back to elementary calculus. This in terms can be written as 0 to 2 pi a half 1 plus cosine 2 theta d theta times the integral 0 to pi of sine phi minus sine phi times cosine squared of phi d phi, which in turn is a half theta plus a half sine 2 theta, and theta ranges between 0 to 2 pi times negative cosine phi. This is the integral of sine phi plus a third cosine to the third of phi, phi ranges between zero to pi. Well, if you do the computation, this equals to four pi over three. So we just calculated the integral of x squared over the following surface, which is unit sphere.